Okay. So anything additional to ask or tell me? No, I don't think so. I think I sort of touched on all the sort of highlights of that email and I'm just sort of, yeah, sometimes I get, get a bit confused between, you say, if a pain resurfaces, plus, so you've got those bumpy days, and then looking at the overall trend and knowing when to kind of go, is this progressing enough or to, yeah, sometimes it's hard to judge, isn't it? I think if the question arises, then it's time. Yes. Yeah. I was kind of just kind of go doing the two thinking, oh, I just need to go up and down and then I'll be ready for unit three. And, and in a few months, I'll be hiking up a mountain. <laughs> well, it could happen. Could happen. Yeah. Right now, you're, what I remember is you were waking up with some numbness in your little finger. Yeah, that's not a huge amount, but it can, it can occur. It's not every night. Uh, when my shoulder, my, suddenly my shoulder got bad. Well, I call it my shoulder, but you know what I mean in this. I think you said it was probably my neck. Uh -huh. uh, it suddenly, as when I did see on the way back down, it suddenly started hurting then for like the whole week back down to now where we're at A. Uh -huh. And I said, I practiced A for that first day and it just kind of like went for a whole day. And then pretty much for the next day of A, and then I was obviously on tongue moodry yesterday, and it's been there a bit, but not, yeah, it's, it's subdued quite a lot. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Okay. Well, well if it's or, subduing, just... then maybe that you're already on track there. Yeah. So as in, like, I got some changes from C, and it just needs integrating back at B and A. Uh-huh. <laughs> So you're now at unit two A. So yeah, I've just done two days of A, and I did tongue mudra last night. So uh -huh. I'm in that sort of in between, thinking, oh, do I pay for unit three, or am I doing more unit two? <laughs> well, in practicing unit two, what you're really doing is preparing for unit three. And there are parallels between action patterns in units two and three. But if you're finding that you're getting adverse symptoms coming up adversity, then it's time to go back and do unit two more. Right. You can, if you can identify any action patterns that you find problematic, then we ought to review those yeah. and see if you've introduced variations to the form. Yeah. Yeah. So when I look back at my notes, when we went back to the whole of unit two after doing the bit of sidetrack on the neck, uh, did I put. When I got to F on the run up, that's when I started getting a little bit. I, I made a note. I only sort of made notes of anything. I wasn't making notes every day. At F, I got a bit of pain in that shoulder blade area and in my glute. Uh, so I noticed a bit of sort of around F that it started going a bit. And then that pain and deep in my glute just sort of remained. It's not like, it's like a niggle. It's not like a pain that's the other pains I had at the beginning, which is, you know, debilitating, as you know. Uh, it's like that slightly deep gnawing kind of something. Um, yeah, sorry, carry on. You reported that your <clears throat> sacrum has been bobbing side to side. Yeah, so on the run up, it was still pretty much stuck on its original side of the right side deeper. And then as I got up to, as I, as I passed F, uh, yeah, as I got to F, it, it, it changed to the left side and then it's gone left to right a couple of times, but on the way back down. Some days feeling a little bit more level. What I'm so, interested yeah. in is your current condition. Okay. So is so, which side, if the if either one, which side is deeper right now? Um, what was it the other day? It was no, no, not the other story. day. Not the other day. Right now. <laughs> okay, I'll check. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely, there's definitely days where it's a lot more even and I'm having to kind of I think still probably a little bit on my on this left side deeper. That's what I was feeling. But also I see you've got a finger pointing at the window. Use the whole <laughs> flat of your hand, not just the fingertips. And you'll get much more shed sense of contour. And then that direction of circling and then the other direction. See, yeah, it's, it's still that one, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's, that's the side it's predominantly stuck on, the, you know, the original stuck side. Okay, so it just means you're not done. So you'll be doing that side up when you do sideline sacral self decompression. Yes. Yeah. And <clears throat> since you're left side up, let's see how that's going to play into it's been the right side that's been going to your little finger, right? I don't mean your sacrum, I mean the numbness in your little thing. Oh, the numbness is on the other side, yeah. It's on the right side. Okay, what I'm thinking is to introduce you to a version of the tongue mudra, which okay. does a lot to equalize the two sides. Okay. And it's a variation of the side rocking tongue mudra you mm -hmm. familiar with that okay and section yes. f where you do the zigzagging movement from back to front yeah and i call this the tooth by tooth side rocking oh. floating palette tongue mudra oh yeah i think we we were, did go over this we were in when we did all the neck kind of stuff but remind me okay so you get into the three-point tongue mudra and then get the palate to float so it's neither going up or down find your neutral mm -hmm. position and then by shifting the tongue to one side you side rock and you aim the sensation toward your rear most upper molar Okay. And you do it in what I call threes, which has the rhythm left, right, left, pause, right, left, right, pause. And the pause is in place to the last side you went to. And the pause enables you to feel more vividly. So you, so you pause and then start on that same side. Well, no, you don't. You go left, right, left, pause, right, left, right, pause. Okay, yep, okay yeah, so you, yeah. So you switch, and the pause enables your attention to land more firmly on the last d location you found. Okay. And you progressively go tooth by tooth from back to front. So when you say tooth by tooth, I'm in the normal tongue mudra, and then I'm am I moving the tip of my tongue, or staying in that position, and I'm just feeling the sensation of the side of the tongue on the tooth, or is it actually moving my tongue? It'll work either way, but if you use the tip of your tongue to get the rearmost teeth, you have to bring the tip back farther. And each time you come a little more forward, you'll find that your tip moves uh, naturally a little more forward as you aim into a more forward tooth. So the, the tongue is staying central wherever it is, and then it, it is the sensation of the side of the tongue being on different That's it. teeth. Yes. And the top teeth, yeah. Top teeth at first. Yeah. And then when you've reached front and center, that is the front 
incisors. Mm -hmm. You then do a front to back movement of the cranium over the palate. Oh yeah, I remember that one. And did I indicate to you about how the palate is actually two halves with a seam in between the two halves? No. Okay, that's the how the palate is. There's a seam or suture so that the palate is has two parts to it. It's okay. got a right and left part and as mm -hmm. if both hands were the single palate in itself. And so you've, mm -hmm. you've got a, a kind of that kind of sensation and you do right. that with the tongue so that you move in such a way that you're aiming into one half of the palate. Okay. In doing so, at that point, you keep your tongue relaxed as possible and make the cranium do all the moving. Okay. And the tongue's still central? The tongue is still central, but because the, and the, because the tongue is relaxed, it's associated with the rest of the core of your trunk. Okay. So the tongue is like belonging to what's below the mouth, and the cranium is moving on top of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that has a very interesting effect when you make sure the tongue stays relaxed. Mm -hmm. You get changes in the vertebral column. Okay. Accentuated because the tongue, the difference between what's happening in the tongue and what's happening in the cranium creates a contrast between what's happening in the core and what's happening in the spinal column. Right. The tongue goes with the core, the cranium goes with the spinal column. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the simple restatement of that is you keep your tongue relaxed, but you cause the movement to address one half of the palate in threes. Okay. And, but in this case, you're going front to back. So it would be like back, front, back, pause, front, back, front, pause. Okay. Let's rehearse that right now so it goes from word memory into feeling memory. Okay, so um, I'll do my left side first. Mm -hmm. okay. Is that right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Because you weren't doing it, you were as a rhythm of threes, you were just switching like front, back, front, back, front, back. You need the extra yeah. pause in between. That's the, the first part. The second is it's a much subtler movement than I saw you doing. Okay. If you do it too grossly, you don't get the sensation. It's mechanical. Okay. okay if you, so it helps to imagine the movement just before you do it. Okay. Try that now. And in in the, the rhythm of three is front, back, front. Is that a three? No. A front and back is one. And then another front and back is one. Is that right? No. Each each shift of direction is one. Front is one. Back is two. Front is three. Pause. Back okay. is one. Front is two. Back is three. Pause. Got you. And let's slow. Try, let's try that now. <laughs> Okay, right. Better? Did you feel it? On the forward, I could feel stuff changing. On the backwards, it's very hard to sense because I've never done it backwards before. It feels weird. <clears throat> it doesn't feel like you're going anywhere. Okay, so I think, again, that has to do with how much movement you are doing. Did you right. proceed by imagining the sensation? Uh, no. How? Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so before you do the movement, lead with the imagination. Yeah, it's still too much. Try half as much movement. Oh, 
was backwards. Did I not move enough? <laughs> you couldn't see it at all. <laughs> oh, I, I can see your movements, and it was even more than needed, about two-thirds of that. Oh, my God. So it's like... Very subtle. It's like an ant movement. Yeah, kind <laughs> ant. of. Yeah, it's the amount of movement that you can imagine. It's easier right. to imagine that much than it is to do that much. Now you're getting closer to it, I can tell. Okay, right. So all my tongue mudras have been a little bit over the top of they to date that I do. Yeah, which is a pretty good accomplishment to get your tongue over the top of your palate. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, yeah, right. It, that's what is needed when you need to be very subtle. You need to switch to leading with the imagination. Okay. Right, so that, and then I'll do the same on the other side, yeah. This is how musicians, concert musicians, play. They have okay. the piece in their memory, and so they can imagine it. And that imagining is what informs their movements on the instrument. Okay. <clears throat> right. So, by going tooth by tooth, you set the stage of gradation front to back because you're doing tooth by tooth a pretty small movement mm -hmm. and by learning how much movement doing tooth by tooth when you go front to back you have a sense of gradation okay so it's not like going all the way from the front to the back to the front all the way it's like going tooth by tooth palette is i showed you this much so you could see it that was the intention was to see it but it's a very subtle it's like a pulling a magnetic pull okay. magnetic like a magnet pulling something a pallet feels mm -hmm. like it's being tugged gently forward gently yeah. back if it's floating that can happen if the pallet isn't floating it's locked and that subtle movement won't do anything right so okay. this will this will create huge increases of control of the musculature that goes down the spine. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that musculature has continuous, or I should say has continuity from the base of the head all the way down to the waistline. Okay. Because when you bring your head forward, your weight shifts. Mm -hmm. And so those muscles adjust to maintain front to back balance. Right. So you can get all the way down the spine by doing that tongue mudra. And typically, that's how I've experienced it. Okay. okay. So the point of this is to give you more suppleness in your neck, which has been tight and squeezing on the nerve that comes out of the neck that goes down the arm to the little finger. Yeah. That little finger was just an indicator that you were holding tension in your neck that you had not yet... Um, made amenable to control. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of gone away at times and then come back as well, so it's unfinished work, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But then again, that's nothing new. It's all unfinished and it never gets finished. But what it does get is sufficiently done that there's no more problems. Yes. But this is one of those, you know what the word asymptote means? No. In maths. Well, then I can't use the term much, but it's uh, it's getting closer and closer and closer to an ideal. But yeah. The, the, the closer it gets, the less there is to reach the ideal, but also the less you can get closer to it. Meaning okay, you can yeah. only, and so the, the more, the closer to perfection, the finer the improvement mm -hmm. is possible. It, mm -hmm. never, it never reaches it. It always gets closer and closer and closer, but never reaches it. Uh, that's mm -hmm. just a term from maths. And uh, okay. I use that with people who have a, more of a technical background, and I didn't know yours, so there we are. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. <clears throat> so we've identified that, at least today, the left side of your sacrum is the deeper side. Mm -hmm. And what I would suggest <clears throat> is doing the tooth by tooth side rocking tongue mudra 
before you do sideline sacral self decompression. Okay. And then alternate between the two. So you do two sets and observe each the effect. Side. Yeah, two sets each side. And yeah. that way, you'll, by observing the effect, you'll know how much to do and whether there's significantly more to do of it. Okay. At a certain point, it will not be significant. It'll feel so, the changes when they occur will be so small that it's like, who cares? Yeah. You'll, you'll feel yeah, that. Cause, cause to date, when I when we were doing that sort of first bit of the neck stuff, I, yeah, I was getting huge sort of feelings of releases in some, mm -hmm. I think, on this side, yeah, this side, or whichever side it was. Yeah. But then what you said, I just get, when I get to the point where they're, too little to be worried about anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Right. So now okay. I'm going to give you what in comedy they call the punchline. Okay. I've shown you how to do it front to back. Yeah. You can do it with your head turned to the side and do that action. And in turning okay. your head as you do that action, you'll get a whole new set of changes occurring. Same so kind doing of change. Is it a continuous head turn as you're doing it, or are you picking spots? In the beginning, pick spots. When you get proficient, you'll get how you can do it in a continuous manner. So it's like, I'm waiting for the camera to come back on my end, locked up. There we are. Yeah. So you're getting little zigzags in an arc, if you can see what I'm indicating. Yeah, yeah, get that, and, yeah. And that will be the, the continuous. And are you doing that all in the forwards to back motion, or are you doing some of it in the backwards to forwards? Both. Oh, it's alternating. It's starting oh. back to forward as one three, and then okay. forward to back on the other, and you alternate between those two. Alternate as you do. Go oh, right. Okay. Okay. And that will uh, unleash a whole series of new changes. Mm hmm. So that's kind of like your PhD of Tan Mudra. Okay. And do I, again, sandwich that in between these, uh, the side lying two sides? Yeah, that's right. And you and start do, with the straight the front. Yeah. St start with front to back, first couple of practice sessions, and then freely mm -hmm. explore doing it as a turning movement. Okay. As soon as you have experience, you'll understand how much to do. Mm -hmm. and what the effects are and then you can right. freely improvise based on your experience of it okay so what i do is i get you to the i get you to the i can't use this as an american metaphor there's no <laughs> baseball in the uk <laughs> well there's there's cricket i suppose okay so uh, there's a getting to the game on the field i yeah. can get you to the field but it's you who has to hit the ball yeah and in so doing the experience enables you to locate where the ball is so that you can strike it okay, okay. yeah so that was one unit of instruction that i've given you with regard to tongue mudra and mm -hmm. that, that's a setup for what is to follow okay so in unit two F, trunk mm -hmm. integration, you're doing maneuvers where you're lifting the shoulder toward the neck and moving the neck toward the shoulder. Mm -hmm. And the instruction in the program is to come down on one of those first and then relax the other. Mm -hmm. Neck or shoulder. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> but there's a way of doing it in which when you've got the whole thing sandwiched like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You relax the head or neck and the shoulder simultaneously so that you're spreading away from that central point that you located where they met. Yeah, got you. Yeah. So when you do that action and you locate a position that lights up some soreness in your neck. Yeah. And you bring the two together. Yeah. As, you, as you come down, you separate both equally from that central location, that central point. Okay. 
and that will enable you to let go of more of the contraction pattern in your neck. Okay, and that's when I'm doing F, not as any extra homework in any other section. Yeah, yeah. just a variant on F. I discovered it fairly recently. Okay. okay. <clears throat> so what we've done just now, this bit with the tongue mudra, is very much about the jaws. Mm -hmm. And Unit 2F has a whole action pattern about jaws. Yeah. So we did jaws and we did the trunk integration. What we in effect did was refine unit F for yeah. your practice. Okay. So if, if your little finger was getting numb, that's quite enough contraction of your neck to warrant being addressed. Okay. Yeah. It should yeah. never happen. You should never have any numbness in the little finger. By the way, that, uh, that it just occurs to me. Yes, it can come out of the neck, but there's also a place where the nerve passes through the elbow here. Right. And that nerve goes straight to the little finger. And if you're contracted in these forearm muscles here, that could also cause a little finger to go numb. Right. It's not what okay. I usually see in people, but it is a variant I've seen. And is that, did, well, you know, when we did, um, you gave me some action patterns for, you know, my, the fact that my fingers sort of spread a bit like this, and I haven't actually done them because I've just been, just haven't done them. <laughs> was that, was that, was that covered in those ones? It was all those sort of, when I was pressing and I'd have to look back at the videos, I can't remember oh, it all. it was interlacing the fingers. Yeah. And squeezing and then separating until the squeeze yeah, prevented I have, separation. I haven't done it. I haven't got round to doing that. Well, it's worth doing. Now, if you do okay. that and you find that you're still getting the numbness in the little finger, there's a maneuver for freeing this place directly. Okay. I've given you enough right now that I don't want to oversaturate your attention. Yeah. And you have plenty to work with right now. So if it turns out you still need it, I'll give it to you on another occasion. Okay, yeah, yeah. So do the uh, tongue mudra bits every practice session with side lying and then the extra bit when I get back to F. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when I am um, thinking of just other sections, when I did do C and that's when I started getting all this sort of pain in here again, when I come up from, um, it's for, from, uh, from nose in the hole itself, um, as I come up, I get real big clunks in my neck. Goodness gracious. <laughs> so this um, is nose in the hole you're referring to? Or are you yeah, referring when I to do... the twists that untwist? No, nose nose in the hole. Uh, yeah, nose in the hole and the actual movement of nose in the hole. As I kind of go either, in, either forward or back in that rotation, but as I do the kind of lifting up, I, I often hear these like clunks somewhere in sort of neck, mm -hmm. neckish area. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, clunks are interesting. If they occur once, it just means that you had a new or pattern of organization come forward. If they keep on happening, what it suggests to me is that the vertebrae of which there are seven in the neck are tight in some areas and the loosest place is doing the movement that should have been distributed among all of them. Okay. And that's your clunk. Yeah, it's happened definitely the last two or three times, quite a, for quite a while on C. Okay, so again, this tongue mudra, tooth by tooth, when you start yeah. turning the head and getting those changes, that will create bunches of changes in the neck. Yeah. And then uh, I'd be awaiting a report that the clunking has stopped. Okay, to so report back if clunking doesn't. So if I get um, so I'm on A now, so by the time I get up to C, should I be seeing some improvement in the clunking? No, it's one while you're practicing C. C right. Is, C is where you're you're experiencing it. It knows on the whole. Yeah. And so that's where we would expect to. to 
get the changes. You, you're doing the tongue mudra and you're practicing that. Right. But it won't show up until you start practicing C because that's where it was showing up. Okay. Okay. But you would expect to experience the neck loosening. Right. Okay. But so, yeah, by including the tongue mudra by the, on C, it should have started to, yeah. Yeah, you, the, the tongue mudra is preparing you by give, developing finer control in many directions of movement because you're, okay. you're doing the turning of the head and you're also leaving the tongue relaxed while you move the cranium and that is getting changes to occur in the vertebrae okay among them yeah and we'll, we'll see how that plays out for you there is an action pattern that further integrates the changes in the neck with regard to side bending and turning Okay. It's a unit three type movement, although I haven't recorded it yet. Okay. I'm almost ready in my new place to be able to start doing videography. Okay, great. But it's, um, I'm telling you that in case the question arises, is it in unit three? And if not, why not? The answer okay. is I haven't done any new recording work since I left Santa Fe. Yeah. Which is months <laughs> ago. But so, yes, yeah, it's been a long time now. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> this at least you're, you're, in, you're in a house now, not a hotel at least. <laughs> That's right. And I have a room that I can use for videography, although it's not quite ready. Anyway, that, the, the point being, if yeah. needed, I, I can convey that to you. Okay. Once I, I can do it in a session such as this. Yeah. Guide you through it. It's just not already available in recorded material. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All oh, right. So yeah, see what happens when I get to see and um, yeah. So um, with all the sort of sections, I'm if I'm still on unit two still at the moment. Do I? What mm -hmm. should I do? Is it is it worth you checking over each section to see if I'm doing anything wrong or or yeah? I would look to your result. Okay. To decide whether or not the section needs attention, or you need okay. to give, I need to give you attention in that section. In, in your practice, if you're finding you finish and you feel improvements, well, the old saying is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. But if you find that symptoms surface after doing one or another, attention is called for yeah so yeah on the way back down from c when my it started hurting every time i practiced b i would get a couple of hours of relief and then it would kind of just come back this is b you were saying yeah so when i started getting this recurrence of the shouldery pain in here i would went obviously then went back to b so each time i practiced b I would, after practice, go, oh, that's better. The pain seems to have gone. For, and we'd be out for about two hours, and then it would just then it would come back. Yeah. B isn't designed to address that location. B is very no. much about the low back and pelvis and below. But it, yeah. Yeah. But, um, but A did change it. I had, you say, I had a, a one day of completely pain-free, and then mm -hmm. the next day, pretty much. And then today, it's just been... A, a bit, but not as intense as it was. So obviously, I've made some shifts in in A. Let's look Can at. I... We have some time today. Let's look at how you do nose in the hole. Okay. Uh, I haven't got my tripod. Let's try. Is that angle okay? Okay. Oh, is that how you do it usually? Yeah. <laughs> There's a preliminary move in which you're hoisting yourself up and lowering yourself down 
several times. So in this position, you reach with the top side arm and lift your head so that the side of your neck and side of your waist are well connected. And then slowly sink down onto your elbow, the shoulder into your neck, the ribs sag toward the surface. That's it. And you do that several times, smoothing out the movement. There you go. That's not in the audio. Is it in unit three? Well, now, now I'm doubting myself. I remember that's how I taught the action pattern, is it with a rehearsal of that hoisting up movement. And then in the last up, that's when you make your first dive toward the little hole. Maybe, well, maybe it is, and I, because I've not used the audio for that one. I use the audio for some of the more complicated ones as cues, but I think for C, perhaps I've blocked a bit off. <laughs> All right, then. So let's just rehearse okay. that small element, hoist up all the way. And you don't have to lift your head real high. It, it, I, take a rest for a moment. I, I need to talk about that for a few, couple of sentences. Mm -hmm. If you lift your head too much, you've got relatively sharp fold at your neck. And then okay. not so much of a curve lowering your spine. Right. We want the curve to be nice and c continuous, smooth. Okay. So you don't lift your head so much that you have a sharp fold. The head and the rest of your spine are like a, a pleasant, friendly curve. <laughs> Let your head droop all the way down before you come up again. Let it curl over your shoulder. That's it. Let it drape. That's it. And then once again, reach with the arm, lift your head, and make the curve of your neck part of the curve of the rest of you. So like the curve like that? Yeah, that's right. With no sharp folds to the side, just an even, friendly, curvular shape. Okay, and then at your last up, from there you die for the little hole. And only as far as you can go without any sense of stretch in the twist. And then that's right, you rock back. Oh, you didn't do the rock back also. Okay. Well, let's see how you do it the next time. Go ahead. Okay. Just continue. Okay, now before you come up, your weight is shifted forward, supported by your forearm and underside thigh. That's right. That's right. You roll back somewhat until you arrive at balance, and then you lift your head, and then you turn. So aim your nose for the little hole, which means come further forward, supported by your forearm and thigh. And let your head hang toward it. Relax your neck up. Don't come back yet. We're still on this part. That's it. That's it. Okay, and look at the hole so that you're aiming toward it. And then you rock back toward your elbow until you feel at balance, at which point you begin your head lift. And you swing around. That's it. Top shoulder back. Head allowed to go back. Head allowed to go back. Yeah, that's, uh, that's its range. Okay, and then once again, lift your head and begin to curve the shoulder forward and aim for the little hole. Notice how much further you got this time? Yeah. And now rock back to balance. And then hoist your head up in a smooth rainbow-shaped curve. And let that under shoulder protrude forward and come up towards your neck somewhat. Let your head hang back within your comfort zone. Yeah. And then resume by forming the rainbow arc, this time going forward. And aim your nose for the little... Oh, see, you went further. In the hole. That's right. And then you rock back first before lifting your head. Here, aim for the hole again. I need to have you do this one. Aiming for the hole, now rock back on the elbow until you're at balance, and then lift your head and swing around. 
There you go. See, and you even came back further this time. And is it okay to let your leg sort of, as you're going back, rotate out a bit? Or should it be staying straight? Mm, keep the inner line of the foot against the surface. Okay. So that the twist occurs at the waist rather than at the hip joints. Okay. The top yeah, the side. Waist of... hmm. Yeah. I'm probably, I'm probably rotating my leg a bit too much. Yeah, just keep your foot in contact and do the twist from the waist and shoulders. See, that's that's good. That's very nice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, I was definitely rotating my leg a bit too much. Okay. Right. So that's a little bit of fine yeah. tuning of how you do nose in the hole. And I think that. Yeah, obviously one side's more stuck than the other, but they definitely are evening up. One side's like that. I think maybe that side I get into the hole and the other side is still a bit stuck, but not half as stuck as it was at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, so let's see, it was true that you needed to do more unit two. Yeah, yeah, I suppose you just kind of, at this stage, I suppose get impatient thinking, oh, I want to be ready for unit three and finish the job. <laughs> I don't think I put anything in unit three that corresponds to nose in the hole. Okay. I don't think there. I don't think I've arrived at anything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now you have some things to play with. Yeah. It turns out that section A was not germane to our situation. Yeah. If you got improvement, that's just fine. In, in unit two A, in those in the hole, um, in the walking into the floor, mm. there is this part where you switch sides. Yeah, and that's probably what was improving your next situation. Was that right. final move where you turn and come down, and then you come up and you turn down? Yeah. So that's okay. fine. It's good that it happens, but it wasn't exactly pertinent to what you've okay. needed. I just wondered if it was like you know, so untwisting the sacrum a bit, and then that wasn't pulling on the shoulder or neck or whatever it is as much. If it took me out of twist and twist a little bit more. Well, that may be if you felt it that way. Yeah, I don't think. Well, my sacrum doesn't feel particularly. It hasn't. It hasn't really changed. So, so maybe it's not that then. And when I check my sacrum, it um, uh, as well as being uneven, it uh, in depth, it's uneven on an angle like that. That's so one. That's right. There that are three right? directions in which it can be uneven. It can be mm -hmm. uneven in the turn, right, left turn. Oh, along the axis of your spine, it can be tilted and it can be aimed too far forward or too far back. Those are the three dimensions of possible yeah. variation. This side to side one gets addressed mm -hmm. in sideline sacral self decompression. Okay. This turn gets addressed in numerous action patterns, including lazy eights. Okay. Yeah. And the front to back gets addressed in spine waves. Okay. So we are addressing all of them. The point is yeah. to remove or dissolve the muscular tension patterns that make you tend toward one of those variations of turn of yeah. the sacrum. Mm -hmm. And then in mere walking, the switch of weight bearing from side to side mm -hmm. and the inherent tendency of walking to have each foot do equivalent weight bearing as you go step to step tends to bring things into a centered position. Okay. So what we do is we unlock it and then the walking pattern consolidates the changes. That's the, that's the in intended effect of the power walks to consolidate yeah. the changes. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm getting good at those now because now it's summer here and the clocks have changed. I go out 
every evening after I've practiced and I can I, I walk for like 30 40 minutes and do mm-hmm. most of it alternating between it because I know them so well now I can just do them without thinking mm-hmm. well the only thing you have to do is count in how many paces of each I've done but um yeah when you do the old Scottish geezers walk do you feel the weight shifting side to side uh yes no I do yes okay. yeah because I kind of quite like that feeling of it yeah moving side to mm-hmm. side yeah. yeah being in the UK I can see why you would like the old Scottish geezers walk <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so okay. yeah, I'm getting quite. I think I'm getting quite good at those. I know. Yeah, I think I'm doing them right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. Okay, right. Okay. So that that sounds like we've covered quite covered. a bit here. Yes. All oh, right. Well, it sounds like, and yeah, B. I've never really particularly had any. I don't think any issues doing. In fact, now I've obviously got better form because I do actually feel more sensation of each. I always have a sensation of each side being flatter, but I think because I'm coming down at balance more, I'm getting more of a yeah sensation in that. So I think it might be C that I when I come back. I said we've just been over it. Um, as you say, just keep going and. Uh, when the next things arise, don't don't leave it multiple weeks thinking that I oh I'm an expert I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, I would tell you, actually, I've already told you that when I do these action patterns, I frequently make new discoveries. Yeah. And I've been doing these longer than anybody. Yeah. So I figure that if I could make new discoveries, that anybody else who's learning this is likely also to experience ongoing discoveries. Yeah. Higher integration. Yeah. So there's no extra points for getting to unit three as if you accomplished something and now you're getting to the end. Unit three just takes what you developed in unit two and puts it into movements that you could not have done had you not started with unit two. Yeah. They're higher integration movements. And they produce changes you can't get in unit two. But if you can still get changes from unit two, then you got it. Do yeah. Unit two. It's just, you, you just <laughs> there's, there's payoff in it. I know. And there's something quite, I suppose, comforting about doing unit two, as in, apart from, say, maybe checking in and the odd tweak, I, I know what I'm doing. So it's kind of, it's easier to fit into the day when you know you know it's easy it's it's less kind of effort than it was Mm -hmm. obviously when i started this what seven or so months ago unit two it was all a bit hard work (laughs) Mm, yeah that's true that's true (laughs) so i should i should enjoy this phase before unit three does come and then i'm like oh damn i need to get my brain in gear again (laughs) well it's true you do need to get your brain in gear again but on the other hand there's less to do in unit three and unit two yeah. every section has two action patterns and in unit yeah. three you fit one action pattern in between yeah. unit one part one and part two so actually yeah. it, and, and the, generally the action patterns are much briefer mm-hmm. than the laborious element by element learning of unit two so unit three is actually faster to go through and gets yeah. more done in its own way because you're prepared yeah and generally how long are people on unit three the same amount they've been on unit two or it just like varies it really seems to be much less mm-hmm. it's just like sort of finishing off the well it's getting things fun. done you couldn't get done with the, the more segmented unit two movements unit three okay. actions are much more flowing okay so yeah. when i move to you sorry go ahead when I moved to unit three, I could still be in the position of still having like some of my, because obviously that loads of things have gone. Like, you know, I had that awful pain in my foot. I had a terrible pain. And you said it was probably like referred nerve pain. Well, that's all gone. And, you know, when I very first met you, I had all that horrible pain down my groin. So some of those really nasty pains have gone. But it just uh-huh. seems to be this shoulder, this area, neck area seems to be a persistent little devil yeah so when you it, go it, to, it, yeah it does seem 
that the deepest levels of change are right immediately around the spinal column. Mm -hmm. Because it's more, you, the movements there are more reflexive in nature rather than voluntary. Right. The balancing reflexes are all about the spinal musculature shaping the curves of the spine. And those balancing reflexes are more fundamental than other movements, even than walking. Mm -hmm. So it seems that the, the closer you get to that core level, the slower the changes occur, mm -hmm. but also the more profound the changes are. Right. So you might sort of feel like you've plateaued for a while and then suddenly you get a bit of a shift. Well, it may be plateaued or, or just that the changes that occur seem to be smaller changes. And it yeah. may seem to be slower going, but it's at a level mm -hmm. in you which is more fundamental. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. So what were the prerequisites for when I do get on, when I'm not getting anything more out of unit two? So just if I'm still getting some changes from certain action patterns, keep going with it. Yeah, keep going with those. Mm. Uh, uh, you may freely experiment with unit three. Mm -hmm. the, the way to do it is if you feel that a certain action pattern in unit two is well in hand, Mm -hmm. You can locate its corresponding action pattern in unit three and do that. Okay, Without yeah. Without having to switch altogether at once from unit two to unit three, you can switch action pattern by action pattern. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. So something like B that's always been easy for me and doesn't produce much change. I could maybe do a higher integrated version of it. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely seeing the sections that I've still got stuff to do, you know, that's mm -hmm. that sort of F and yeah, and A and stuff, yeah. So um, I, I coded the opening images of Unit 3, mm -hmm. you know, the nature images at the beginning. Right. And so the yeah. corresponding Unit 3 version has the same nature image as its counterpart in uh -huh. unit two so you can tell if it's the same nature image they are related i've got you yeah okay all right all right that's interesting yeah maybe when i'm on b i might have a little experiment uh -huh. um yeah all right i think that's probably covered enough questions to, uh -huh. for today isn't it Got lots to. I'll watch that back tomorrow whenever. Um, yeah. And I've marked certain timestamps, and if you see more or I'm off by a few seconds, it is possible because if I'm talking and that suddenly, oh, I should mark that one, there might be a lag yeah. between my recognition and touching the button to mark the time. Okay. So you may correct me and add yeah. timestamps as you will. Yeah. All right. I'll do that. All right, well, I'll carry on, but not run ahead of myself. I'll call for help. Oh, so what's good the best idea. Thing to do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think what it is is obviously you get impatient just to be back. To, it's not that obviously you don't mind doing the movements at all, and I've always dedicated time to fitness and whatever, so that, that the commitment's not an issue for me. It's it's just that, you know, what it, remember what it was like when I'm just, oh, I'm just desperate that I could, like, go start – you know, I could go for a run if I wanted to or lift some weights or mm -hmm. you just get impatient for to have all those things back. Even though mm. I have regained a lot, you know, like I do two 40 minute walks a day, which, you know, is a miracle compared to where I was in the summer, last summer. But you still always get hungry for more, don't you? Mm. <laughs> it's, it's like eating potato chips. Yes. You just want to have one after the other. Yeah, keep going, yeah. But, yeah. It'll be worth it in the end. When I do go back to some exercise, I will i won't be getting much... Every year or so, I won't be getting myself into a, into a mess, will I? 
I rather think not. Yeah. All right. Brilliant. All right. Well, I'll go back to A. Um, I think I'm probably yeah, say all right on A and B, but when I get to C, I'll let you know if it's... Um, uh, what, what, what th where I might have to have a check in actually is D because I'm aware it's one that makes big changes but for me it doesn't seem to make big changes so I think is that just me and that I, and I don't have big changes to make there or probably yeah yeah but I don't get I've, I only once did I have a big change in D where I had loads of muscle soreness in my hamstrings the day after and that but that's only been on one pass through and I've done what like 14 up and down now mm -hmm. or seven complete whatever you want to however you want to count them but i don't really get big changes in d and i think oh yeah. well there so. there is a unit two a unit three variation on d yeah okay and all right that that's the one that brings the effect into the neck so oh, right. we have the option of doing a session where I show you that action pattern that I earlier said I had not yet recorded. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Well, yeah, that's good. And so, oh, that's what I was going to say. So how, how do you, how was the best way of working the mentoring sessions? If it's going to be a bit, you know, random or when I need them, do I pay one by one or do I do a subscription? What's the best? What's the best way to do it? Mm, we're off instruction, so shall I stop the recording and we can talk about this? Yeah.